Hey, welcome back to Volumes, and in today's episode, I spoke to my friend Andrew on what it's like growing up where he grew up, which was in Transnistria, a little country within another country called Moldova, and what it was like for me to actually visit that country and experience it alongside him. And uh, yeah, so that's a really interesting episode, so thanks for watching, it means a lot. Remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff, and thanks. Hello, and welcome back to the podcast of Volumes. If you've seen it before, you'll know that this background is not the usual background. It is a work in progress. We're making it different. And uh, yeah, so to jump right in, I'm here with Andrew Hollis, my friend Andrew Hollis. Oh. Um, and we're here to discuss and talk about... In fact, Andrew called this, uh, like we should call this episode, um, Reflections. Yes. Instead of Volumes, because we're not... It's not so much voicing... Um, I'll cut that out in post. It's not so much uh, discussing something like like a, a, an interview, it's more so both of us talking about something we've both done um, together uh, and uh, an experience that we have uh, went through. That sounds very dramatic. It wasn't it's like an dramatic. introduction to poor man. <laughs> this, this way you're going here. No, uh, I think it's wait, I think you, you know, you're confused what's going on here, clearly. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so me and Andrew, I mean, do you want to give me the context or I give the context? There you go for it, uh, so me and Andrew and Lucy, my girlfriend Lucy, um, went to uh, a place called Transnistria. Um, and Moldova. And Moldova. And London too. And Glasgow. We yeah. went a lot of places. Everywhere, mate. <laughs> um, as an experience that was quite interesting. And it was uh, we did it because Andrew is, was born in Transnistria. Well. I grew up there. I was born in Russia. You were born in Russia? Yeah. Oh, this is new information. There you go. Right, well, maybe we should jump in a different way then. <laughs> you need to tell me about yourself. Andrew, where were you born? I was born on a train in Russia. What? <laughs> saving all the Why podcasts. have you never explained this to me? There you go. Saving it for the podcast, man. <laughs> all the juicy info. 10 um, years, man. <laughs> you were born right. on a train? Yeah. So basically, uh, I think my mom wanted to give birth in like this town or whatever so she was like i'm going to take this train there but then i think the train being shaken and all that she started having her contractions on the train right well i think i technically wasn't born on a train but i think they had to like literally like stop the train and get me off it and then i'm not so you i don't were, actually know where i was born but it may have possibly been, been on a train do you know where the town was yeah so the town is called rostov in fact you've seen it on my passport you should know ah right but okay. the town is called rostov and that's in russia so you, that is actual russia that's where you were born yeah right and that's where i lived for the first few years of my life okay can we take this back even further then where were your where was your mom born uh i couldn't tell you in fact uh, i'm trying to think where did you know so, i'm up? pretty sure yeah i'm pretty sure my mom would have been born in Tiraspol in Transnistria. next year right we okay because right. uh, my, my grandparents moved there when they were fairly young and they lived there most of their life so my mom was raised and she was born there I'm guessing when she, my mom, when my mom grew up, she moved to Russia, right? Just because that's what most young people do—they go there for uni and stuff like that. So my mom grew up in Transnistria, and she was born there, I'm assuming. And so she moved to Russia when she was younger, and then that's where I was born and lived there for the first three years of my life. Right. Well, this is brand new information. Yeah. Um. Okay. Wow. I don't know where I go from here. I'm I'm mind blown. I'm blizzled. So. Back to this train story. <laughs> right, okay. I don't know too much about it, but yeah. So just let me let me get this right. You were on a train. Well, you were a baby. You were a, a I was on a train. Pre-birthed yeah. baby. Yes. On on a train. Fetus Andrew. Specifically going to a town in which your mum wanted you to be birthed at. Yes. And the train had to basically pull Stop, over. Yeah. Oh, well, She's trains don't pull over, but you know what I mean. Stop, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And they got out at a town and a field. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I probably should have asked, but yeah, I think they must have got out and went somewhere. Rushed me somewhere. And then but, you were born. Yeah. Wow. Boom. That is pretty interesting. It's pretty fucking hardcore, isn't it? Until you were three years old, you lived in this. Is yeah. This the so time we lived where in Rostov. You? Yeah. So that's where I was born, around about there, and that's where right. we lived for the first three years. Yeah. Right. And then. For seven more years, yep. around about seven more years, you lived in Tiraspol. Yes. 
uh, which is the capital of Transnistria. Correct. And to give more context to what's going on in Transnistria, as an unrecognized country within Europe, um, which effectively is within Moldova. Yes. Even though it is a completely functioning independent yeah. country, has its own currency and politics and president. Um, and I mean, effectively, everyone has its own everything, right? Yeah, it's pretty much a country. It's just not really recognized as a country by anyone. almost anyone else. I think there's there's a few. There's like a band of little unrecognized countries. There's like three or four other countries that are kind of like it. And they kind of recognize each other. They're kind of bros together. <laughs> so cute. But That's no amazing. one else recognizes them. They're just like that bunch of misfits. Yeah, sit, they, they're they on sit their own table. lunch table. They're like a little emo <laughs> lunch table. That's basically them. No, no one acknowledges insane. them, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a few other countries that are basically in, in the same situation. Right. And what, like they must be within other countries as well. I think so, yeah. With like just a massive population of kind of like unrecognized people. Pretty much, yeah. Right. Um, so then after living in Transnistria, you moved to the UK. Yes. Or you moved to Scotland. Yes. Did you move to where you live now? Yeah, just to Karok, yeah. And then you've lived ever since? Yeah, like, pretty much since, yeah. All right. I mean, that's pretty good context for what's going on there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, me, Andrew and Lucy went to Transnistria uh, to go see the culture, go see the people and spend time with Andrew's grandparents, yep. his mum's mum and dad. Um, I mean, where do we even start? It was such, <laughs> such a crazy it's adventure. Um, what, why, why did you invite us? Just curious. Uh, I just kind of went there myself most of the time because I, I go and visit them as much as I can. Like, just say it, we're really cool. You twice can... They're pretty cool, yeah. yeah we're cool I thought, uh, just because there are not that many people go or really know about it. Like, whenever I tell people where I'm from, they're like, yeah, like, I have no idea what this is. And I guess it is pretty different from what most people here would be used to, I guess. Yeah. Even like, I guess even Russia is pretty different, but I feel like most people know what Russia is about because it's a pretty big country and it's like, you know, it's in the media and everything. So yeah. most people would know, but Transnistria, I feel like most people, I've never even heard the name, no. never mind know what the country is like. I think even you guys, you didn't even realize what it's like until you actually got there. No, not at all. Because it was it's not massive, really, massive culture shock. Yeah, it's very... It's not not very secretive, but I just think like people on the inside kind of stay on the inside in a yeah. way, and it's, it's just not really. It definitely, yeah, it stays under the radar. Um, I mean, even when I was like getting uh, euros, so you you have to exchange money in the country. Um, when I was getting euros to get exchanged over there, the the woman at the uh, currency exchange, is that yeah. what you call it? Yeah. Uh, she was asking where I was going and I said Moldova which is yeah. an even more recognisable name yeah. and she was like I've never heard that yeah. and like <laughs> you know what I mean um, and I mean anyone I spoke to didn't even know what Moldova was and yeah. then I had to go like well I'm not really going to Moldova I'm kind of going to Moldova I'm going to Transnistria and then they were like nah <laughs> they were like is that in Europe <laughs> Um, I think uh, what was it the guy in the video said Moldova itself is the least visited country in Europe yeah. And then you have transition within that, so even less people know about that. So it's just it's the most kind of like abandoned place ever, yeah. I guess. In I, that kind of sense. I read a fact. I mean, I don't know how truthful this fact is, but I, I love telling people this fact mm-hmm. purely because it's like mind blowing if it's true. And it was that in 2011 or something oh, like that, yeah. only one person visited Transnistria. And that was Probably it. me. <laughs> <laughs> was like, Kevin, they, yeah. yeah. So, yeah visiting yeah so that's why just because i thought you guys would enjoy seeing something that's completely something most people wouldn't have seen i guess and i yeah. think it is honestly quite a nice country as it you, is amazing you know, so i could have been a good surprise though like if it was kind of shitty like i don't know like moldova was i probably wouldn't have taken it but the fact that i knew it was going to be nice and everything was cheap there as well so it's just, yeah it's just a really cool place to visit for like five days or however long we went for yeah but so yeah I thought you guys would like to come and see what it's like um yeah in terms of how good it is, like how pretty this place is and how amazing it is it is like mind-blowing and also thank you very much for taking us it was amazing thank you for coming but it really is it's something i can easily say it was the most informative fascinating trip i've ever been on in my life and like it was just so different from anything i've ever experienced um and it wasn't like it was like outrageous do you know what I mean yeah it was very chill it was, but yeah it's like, almost uh, the opposite of like outrageous it's yeah. so down to earth yeah, and so that's what makes perfect. it so special yeah. yeah um 
but yeah as i said just like a one i feel like a once in a lifetime opportunity hopefully it's not hopefully i get to go back um if i'm invited back <laughs> yeah. um also a fun fact you can only go to transnistria via invite no that's not true um well, yeah. I mean, you should probably mention if you go there, you should yeah. you have a no Russian or bring someone that knows Russian because yeah. people there will not speak <laughs> English. Because me and Lucy would have been dead. <laughs> yeah, or oh, that as well, um, yeah. But, well, actually, we're, the people are so nice as well. Yeah, like, like uh, they're <laughs> nice in a different way. Uh, they're a genuine nice. They're not a fake nice. Like, I feel like in the UK, everyone's kind of fake nice. Um, but there, everyone was very, like... They only say please and thank you and sorry when it's like a necessity to say it. Um, and what I mean, like when people bump into each other, they don't say sorry. It's like, oh, that's just like these things occur in life. They're so mundane. Why even waste breath on it kind of thing? But we here would be like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And we'd apologize a thousand times for something so insignificant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, let's jump in chronologically. We went to London. We flew from London to Transnist- uh, to uh, Moldova, Kishinev, yeah. which is the capital of Moldova, which was pretty complicated in itself because getting a flight to Moldova is, it's not hard, but it's kind of awkward because yeah. you can't just fly directly from Scotland to Moldova. You have to go from like Scotland to London, which we did, and then flew from London to Moldova. Or you go to like... Uh, Turkey, I feel like Turkey yeah, was like the I big think, one. Yeah, like the, all the times that I went there, I have to take two or three different connecting flights yeah. pretty much. Because the way we mental. went was probably the most pleasant way of actually went. Well, I usually get a flight to London, oh, from London to Glasgow. Usually, obviously, we took the bus, but yeah, usually it takes yeah. about two or three flights at least. Yeah. So it's definitely a bit of a pain because pretty much no one goes there. And that's why it's so difficult to get a flight, I guess. But yeah. Um and. Another kind of, like, not a problem, but a weird thing would be, like, we could have went to a country. I can't remember what it was, actually, what the connecting flight was. We could have went to a country, stayed there a night, and then went to uh, from there to Moldova. I think which it was Turkey, yeah. Was it Turkey? I think so, yeah. Um, but I can't remember what the deal was, but we would have needed a visa or something like that, remember? Just because we stayed there for yeah. over a day or something. It was really complicated anyway. Um, but... Moldova, you don't need a visa for unless you stay over 90 days, right? Something, Something like that. Yeah. Something like a lot of days. Yeah. So we didn't need to worry about that. Um, it's actually quite straightforward to get there and go to Moldova. It wasn't, it seemed quite modernized yeah. and commercial and quite... Well, until Brexit happens, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then everything is ruined. Um, but yeah, so we got to Moldova. Um, we then took... A, your grandfather's friend's car, yep. like he drove us with your grandfather from Kishnov to Tiraspol. Tiraspol yep. being the capital of uh, Transnistria. Transnistria. Um, and we had to go through border control from Moldova to Transnistria, which was probably like, even though it was really easy, everything went pretty smoothly. It was the one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had. Well, in, in fact, it was two border controls. It was two different sets yeah. of border controls. Yeah, because there's like a no man's land in between. Yeah. Um. So we stop at the well, presumably the Moldovan one yep. to begin with. Just you just had to stop the car for literally like a second and just keep yeah. driving. That's all you have to do for that one. And then, what was the one we actually had to stop? That's the transition one. Right. So we had to stop at the transition one. Get out. Uh, go into like a little office also there's no like i don't know why i thought this was so strange but there's no like car park and like you just pull off of the side of the road yeah and get out it's, it's yeah. just abandon your car get out we got into the uh this little office area where by the way everyone's military there's no there's no police there place, yeah. for sure yeah lucy was like pretty like normal about it she was smiling oh thank you please and all this stuff I was scared. Like, I'm going to be honest, I was pretty scared. I was sweating. Everyone carried guns. I'm like, guns, they, they could kill me. I'm scared. <laughs> um, and I feel like, in a, in a way, they kind of play on it. Like, Yeah, I think, well, I think, especially when like, we went back, you can kind of tell that like their jobs are so boring. They kind of enjoy having a bit of power. Mm. Especially when they see, like, they don't see, obviously, like many foreigners yeah. or anything. So when they do, they kind of like, oh, fresh meat. Yeah. Like they're, they're, I don't think most of them mean bad in a way, but they nah. definitely it's like, it's, get a little I bored, it's, I guess, yeah. almost. 
it's yeah. a little bit of fun, but yeah. it is scary. But actually, well, I'll jump to this story then. We went from Tiraspol back to Moldova for a day, or uh, Kishna for a day, and we had to stop back at this, uh, the border control, and they check, you get these little temporary passport card things, like a visitor's... It's basically like a mini visa, I guess. Yeah, um, which, which is what your grandfather basically got us. Like they, I don't know what he said, but he made sure we got them, and yeah. like everyone went really smoothly, so shout out. <laughs> to my grandpa shout out to your grandpa big Alex <laughs> big Alex <laughs> um, but yeah actually timestamp that um, I'll show you the photo I hope I'm allowed to show like uh, stuff like that right yeah well I mean if you're asking me then yeah sure yeah it's, it's good enough so basically we get these little these little white passport things uh, visas little visas um, and on the way back out you have to show you have to show every time you leave and enter uh, Transnistria or Moldova and they they kind of like stop the bus and you they go through everyone and I remember like kind of like hand it over taking my hat off like looking very presentable like straight face and the guy's like looking at it and kind of looks back up to me and then legs it and legs it up to me and I'm like oh my please. god oh my god please <laughs> and he just gives me it. and like there's no bother but like this guy he's like full army uniform like like a, I don't know. It's a little bit over the top. Yeah, and then even on the way back, it was even crazier because that guy's hat was like, do you, did you see how big his hat was? Yeah. Like that was a lot of hat he had on. Um, but I mean, I, I, even though it went really well, it was still it was very intimidating. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, border control actually went really smoothly. So we left. We kept going. Um, also, the the guns they carry are very old looking. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They're not like when we see, um, like police carrying weapons and like not weapons. You know what I mean? Like the, what, what am I saying? When we see like armed, armed security yeah. and like airports and stuff like that, they're all like dressed in black and it looks very modern. And they're like have these, yeah. I don't know, modern looking guns if that makes sense. These guys were carrying stuff that looked like were used during nineties at least. Yeah, like yeah, back in the day. So. Um. <clears throat> yeah it was it was a weird experience on on that kind of stuff but anyway we go we pass we go through uh kind of the second biggest city um yep. uh, Benderi, or bender as it's called in english but Benderi <laughs> is the, um, the native language and then we go to uh to uh to Tiraspol, Tiraspol, yeah. and yeah so when we get to Tiraspol, it's kind of like you 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 described it better. It's like a massive town rather than yeah. A it doesn't. Small city. Feel, it is. I guess it's almost like the size of a city, but yeah. it definitely doesn't feel like a city in any yeah. way. Because you you obviously you have the town center, but even in the town center, you have things that you'd never seen any other town center. Pretty much, it just feels like a big village almost in a way. Yeah, um, it has. 600,000 people something around there uh yeah something like that i think yeah. maybe i'm making this number up i don't know um but it's yeah it's like a big city uh, a big uh, town rather than yeah. a small city but we were staying in basically the city center right very close to it yeah. yeah um so andrew's grandparents stay they they must stay like bang in the city center right okay yeah of course not like, within close. the radius yeah well, it looked like there was very few high-rise buildings and stuff like that out with where they kind of stayed. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, you, you've got your apartment blocks. So I think most people live in flats and mm-hmm. tall apartment blocks. I think most people, like... Well, it's kind of weird because you can have, like, little kind of almost farmhouses. Like, do you remember when we went at night to see the woman? There's sort of, like, in that area, there's, lot, there's sort of, like, little farmhouses almost. Like, little one four yeah, houses, yeah. yeah. And then right next to that is, like, massive nine four apartment buildings. Yeah. So I think the kind of the nine four apartment buildings came about because obviously during the war, Second World War, that is, that place got destroyed pretty heavily, got like bombed and stuff. So yeah. you had to like <clears throat> build up lots of accommodation for people really fast. So right, instead yeah. of like building like individual houses like you have here, you had to pretty much just build like massive Everything, houses yeah. just so everyone can live somewhere. So that's why you have like so many like massive apartment blocks basically. But yeah. you also have little houses that people build themselves pretty much yeah. as well. Um. Yeah. So, how much of it was destroyed during World War Two? Quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Not everything, but there's pretty heavily. I think a lot. Well, definitely a lot of the buildings were definitely rebuilt, and then 
yeah it's quite a lot of stuff yeah basically it does kind of seem like it's been lost in time ever since like maybe like the 50s ever since well days. i think ever since communism fell i think you kind of right well the whole country kind of tries to stay in that era during like the cold war yeah because i don't know if you, you want can... to go into that now but oh that's, yeah like, let's, the whole let's just jump right in right basically yeah, the, the whole kind of i guess you could say selling point for this country is <laughs> selling one. most obviously after communism fell most countries are like yeah so that was really bad let's not think about that push that under the carpet let's take down all the statues of lenin and all that like obviously all the countries like russia ukraine Moldova, Bulgaria, whatever, all those kind of countries. They kind of moved on and yeah. started their own. They're kind almost of, ashamed of it and embarrassed. Yeah, they by became it. very westernized, and obviously it was it was was horrible things happened. So not without reason. So they all kind of moved past it. But Transnistria, on the other hand, they're like they embraced it. Nah, mate, communism was let let's <laughs> let's stay, let's party up with the communism. So you see, like. Like, yeah, I'm sure you saw like three or four statues of Lenin. Uh, way more than that. Yeah, well, I'm just saying during your stay, there's way more, but there's like statues of Lenin about. I have people. at least like five photos yeah, right. with statues of Lenin. Like, yeah, just like communism. Maybe sex. Like, we have like so many war memorials. We've got like yeah. tanks with the communism, uh, communist stars, yeah. just war memorials everywhere. And it's a country that I think is still not really proud, but it's still, it almost belongs for that era. Do you yeah. know what I mean? um definitely I think. Yeah. and there's, there's, there's of... there are reasons for that i think oh well there's a there's a good there's a really good uh video that went viral about six months ago where the guy called uh both and bankrupt went to moldova and uh he kind of explained it pretty well in his video is so this the vlog like, one yeah right yeah, yeah. so he kind of like he was like one of the very first like popular vloggers actually went to moldova and he was like i think at the start he was like kind of like oh it's the country no one goes to so it'll be quite funny to go and visit mm-hmm. just to see how bad it is but then I think he kind of goes and visits it and actually realizes why. How like, it's good n- and how it's well, great. How, well, I think he realizes how bad Moldova is. Oh, right, yeah. right. But he kind of realizes why no one goes and visits it and like, the kind of reasons behind all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think the main reason, I guess, to give that kind of a bit of an explanation why Transnistria is so in touch with like, the whole communism side and why it wants to kind of keep a grasp on that is because just life for people was just so much better back then, basically, because ever since kind of communism ended, like basically like people got less money like buildings stopped getting built because like, everything was kind of happening during that era obviously a lot of bad things are happening but to the people to the normal people a lot of good things are happening you know there was a sense of community like mm-hmm. people got jobs people uh, people got paid people had something to do the government was flourishing everything was happening you know what i mean and then after it kind of finished like uh people stopped getting jobs like the whole and that's why it kind of broke away as well i guess because basically what happened why it's an independent country i guess was when because obviously you had the USSR and that was yep. part of USSR so when communism fell apart everything broke away and all the countries want to be their separate countries you know Ukraine want to be Ukraine Moldova want to be Moldova and then uh, Transnistria which was kind of its own state but it was also part of Moldova during that time it was very uh, kind of pushed to be a part of Moldova and right. part of the Moldovan people but because a lot of kind of Russian people live there they're like well we don't want to be a part of Moldova because we're not Moldovan people yeah, yeah. we don't want to be uh, get forced by Moldovan culture to speak their language and like be a part of their culture. We want to kind of be, because we're Russian people, we want to stay like Russian people and have a Russian culture. So that's why they're like, right, we'll be our own state then. We'll kind of have some kind of ties with Russia, like very loose ties. But so they kind of just want us to stay as their own people, be their own country. But then no one really recognized that just mm-hmm. because it was kind of weird, I guess. It's not really thing that happens. And that's why they always, always also try to kind of stay communism, uh, communist, sorry. Uh, just because it was kind of better for them because to be their own independent country just was not working yeah, out basically they, they couldn't survive uh, self-sufficiently yeah and very, they still have well, quite strong ties to Russia because I'm pretty sure Russia supplies like a lot of the gas for them because yeah. I'm pretty sure when they went to the yeah. farm you could literally see Ukraine and you could see all of the kind of all the kind of pipelines and stuff mm. like that for oil and gas so it's still got quite close ties I guess and that's why it's, it's um, really complicated <laughs> it's kind of strange because when you think about these places like ukraine um and moldova and i feel like when you research them ukraine moldova uh what's the neighboring country to moldova on the other side bulgaria maybe or romania sorry romania, romania yeah. um romania and uh, like all that sort of uh the, the eastern block or whatever it's very like they just kind of brand them all the same um and then that that is well i mean i've never been to ukraine and i've never been to uh, romania but i've been to moldova now and i've been to transnistria and that's transnistria is within moldova 
Yeah. And those cultures alone are so drastically different, like yeah. beyond belief. Well, plus, it's also weird because in uh, Transnistria, I think you have something like 40 or 50% of the people are Russian, mm. then about 30% or something like that are Moldovan, and then like 20% are Ukrainians. Yeah. So you have just like a cesspool of different cultures just within Transnistria. Yeah. So that kind of makes it <clears throat> just such a weird voice as well, I guess, just because you have people speaking, I guess, different languages and being from. Yeah. different kind of cultures well, rather than everyone just being Russian or whatever you actually do have quite a lot of different people from different kind of countries and that's why like when you grow up uh, and actually when I was in school you get uh, taught like a bunch of different languages like you get to choose between Moldovan and Ukrainian to get taught in school what did I you wanted do? English I, I chose, chose Moldovan so I was I was learning English and Moldovan but I also could have been learning Ukrainian as well so mm. people but speaking, you were growing up speaking Russian yeah that's so people Very be speaking a bunch of languages, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So going back to you saying like uh, how they kind of do love communism or how they've held on to that ideology they've got and that a culture. Fond memories is yeah. probably the best way to describe it. They don't like um, want it back or anything, but they they, yeah. they look at it in a much in a much better way than most. They look at it like their younger people. years of joy and happiness and how everything was good and basically yeah. yeah. And now they're all it, a bit yeah. like oh, because they're now? still like yeah, they're still like Soviet cafes and all that and yeah, obviously um, just, yeah. So just a bunch of good. That's like, a good yeah. thing to talk about. Yeah. The tank that you spoke about earlier as. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The first tank that the U uh, that R USSR used to fight against the Nazis. Well, in that interaspo, so there's a, a statue of a tank which you could probably put a picture up. Of. Oh yeah. So it's kind of like literally in the city center. It's just standing right there. Uh, so and that is the first tank that entered Tiraspol when fighting the German or the Nazi occupation during World War Two, and they've still got that tank just kind of sitting there. And it looks pretty cool and we got photos all over it Tom climbed it yeah yeah Lucy tried to climb it but she, she fell off it uh, I wish I had a good video of that no, man, unfortunately. I, I felt so bad yeah she cut her hand open and had to do first aid oh well, I can put in the first aid video imagine going to Russia and falling off, falling a, off tank. a tank that is a story that's good pretty, job Lucy that is pretty Soviet right that there is. also the tea we're drinking oh yeah is, uh, do we have the thing no oh, I think you left it in the kitchen ah I'll put up a, a timestamp of the, this as well. I'll put up some some tea. It's called, uh, in fact, it's called Suvorov tea, which is right next to the tank, in fact, in the city centre. We saw a big statue of the guy called Suvorov. Yep. You took a picture with him, I, I did, yeah. I'll put up that. So he is well. basically the founder of Tiraspol, and I think that was founded in 1790s or something like that, back in the old days. But he's basically the founder of the city. Basically, the city used to be like, kind of like a part of Turkey, and it was ruled by like Turkish people, and then kind of Russia came in and fought them off for a while and it was kind of back and forth but he was kind of the guy who finally fought them off and founded the city oh in fact that goes uh there's another great story about see the big castle we drove by in Benderi. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah in the neighboring town there's like a quite an old castle slash stronghold whatever you want to call it it's a pretty cool story so that was kind of like a, a turkish stronghold i think at one point and they were defending against like russian people coming in and stuff like that so that Savarov guy who founded the town used a pretty cool strategy. He basically didn't have that many soldiers to siege the castle with. So what he done was he made the soldiers kind of run around in circles to make it look like he had more soldiers. <laughs> so they're basically seeing the same people running over and over again. But it kind of looked like it was a very big a army. massive army. So when like, the Turkish people saw that, they were okay. They kind of just kind of ran away from the castle because they, they thought they'd get overrun by all those people. And they were like, let's duck out before And that's uh, kind of how we won wrecked. that. So he was the guy that founded the city. So he's kind of like the... Yeah, the, one of the biggest figures there, and that's the tea we're drinking is. Oh name. yeah, it's named after him. Yeah, and even more so was as like branded with um, sheriff. It's like sheriff tea, yep. and sheriff is like a massive uh, brand or company. Umbrella or, Corporation. Oh uh, yeah, yeah Umbrella, Umbrella Corporation over there, and they own like stadiums. St literally massive football stadiums. They own all the shop, shops. Like the, they don't own all the shops, but they own all like the supermarkets, if that makes sense. It's like, like the Tesco of yeah. Tiraspol. Do they have any competition though? Pretty much no. no. They're like the biggest kind of... Yeah. Yeah. You still have like little shops, like little semi-independent yeah. shops and stuff like that, but they're the ones that have like supermarkets. Yeah. Actually, they have a hypermarket. Oh, called? it's called... Uh, was it a hypermarket? I can't remember. It's massive. Yeah, area. it's like a supermarket on <laughs> Eichies or something. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like um, every Tesco you've ever seen in your life put Times together. Times five or something, yeah. Um, 
And they own all the fuel stations and stuff like that. And they got like benches with the stuff as yeah. well. Pretty much so much stuff just Everything. branded with the kind of name, yeah. Which seems very uh, anti yeah. communist. Yeah, well, that's kind of like. Because obviously, I think it's a very good thing that we went now rather than waiting like five or ten years. Because I think yeah, it's changing. the country is definitely changing. Because maybe yeah. like when I was growing up, it was still very old fashioned and yeah. there wasn't that much kind of Western influence, shall I say. But it was kind of slowly changing and now you can kind of see it <clears throat> maybe mid-transition because maybe half of the stuff is still quite old and maybe communist and, you know, I mean, like yeah, yeah. very kind of <clears throat> ancient looking or 90s looking, yeah. you know, from a old, does older look period. Like a, a throwback. And then right next to that is very, it's very juxtaposition-y. Uh, you have like all these like big fancy shops like Apple shops and, yeah. you know, massive supermarkets and like basically you know, like westernized kind of stuff. Which I think um, partly is because of a lot of like criminals and gangsters coming in with loads of money, and obviously it's because it's really cheap to live there, starting their own businesses and whatnot, and they're westernizing that place. So, Although, if, yeah, go on. S- saying that, the it seems like everything's pretty good there. The crime seems very low. Yeah. Um, this is in Transnistria, not Moldova. Uh, in Transnistria, crime seems very low. Everyone has like a good morale. Everyone seems like pretty happy actually. Mm-hmm. Um. There's a like a kids play park on every corner. It's a very clean place. Um, like they've got a skate park and it was like absolute hustling bustling like during. There's like was no homeless people as well. No which homeless I think people. When we were driving up <clears throat> to the town on the fir- on the very first day, there was like a poster of being like, "Oh, you mm. need like work. We can come work in the fields." Like it was like a very kind of like come work for a day and get paid so basically if people don't have jobs it's very easy to find just it's like come a, work in like a field or something <clears throat> hire a hand for a day kind of thing yes um so i think it's kind of easy for yeah. people to find something to do at least so we, we literally didn't see a single homeless person no, no there was no Quite homeless, homeless cats but that's uh oh yeah that's a whole other <laughs> uh no no homeless people yeah like um I, th- there wasn't like a lot of things to do for kids in the sense of like bowling alleys and stuff like that but that i feel like that is why the kids have something to do they're not spoiled for choice yeah. in a sense they're just they're again down to earth they have they they look for community over anything else they they hang about together and like you have a beach uh that's part of the yeah. the river nester nester yeah um and people go to that and like i just everyone is doing something but again, yeah, I feel like that's changing because pretty much what you described was how I grew up. And I think I was very lucky, but I think a lot of that kind of stuff is changing now with yeah. the whole kind of Western influence. I think a lot of kids nowadays are just like on their phones and spending their time yeah. indoors rather than going out because you didn't really see that many. Well, I guess we, we came when that, it was school. The, the time, skate park was like even. full of people. Yeah, but... But we did go to an actual amusement park, which is like a... Yeah, it was like an amusement park. It had yeah. like a Ferris wheel and like and it was like an actual park and stuff. as well. <laughs> yeah, within a like a public park. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was empty. Yeah. There was no one there, no kids there, and I feel like like if, I don't know, like that's something you'd expect people to use. But I guess that is showing that transition. Because yeah. when I when I was growing up, that place was back in like every day. And yeah. We went there peak time. We went there at like four, three, four p.m. or something. Yeah, just, just it's like the schools are finishing yeah. and stuff like that. People were out and about. Yeah, because when I was growing up, I remember that place being absolutely packed and pretty much everyone was there. And then yeah. obviously the beach as well. That was pretty empty. I think when I saw it, I was yeah. busier than any river-based beach I've ever seen. But oh yeah, but still it definitely was like didn't. Well, 10, it wasn't busy. 10, yeah. 20 people tops, yeah. and most of them were adults as well. They yeah. were like an older generation of people going for a swim together and stuff. So it's it it definitely changing, but it's still. It's still kind of mid transition, I think, and I was yeah. very lucky to have grown up when it was still kind of when it was good. <laughs> when it was good, basically, yeah. Peak. Simply, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I'm very grateful that I got to see it before it got completely radicalized by by the the, the plague of Western culture. Um, but yeah, it, it was quite an experience. Um, in regards to the kind of Soviet stuff it does have, all the kind of like communist stuff it does have, USSR and whatnot. It's not as riddled with it as I thought. I thought it would be absolutely <laughs> like drenched in it. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> but it's, it was like, at the same time, I, in my head, I kind of thought, oh, well, it won't have any of it. Do you know what I mean? It won't have any of that kind of stuff. 
but it was kind of like that sweet spot <laughs> it was in places instead of having like big statues everywhere We've converted them <laughs> <laughs> um it was like the little things that was like whoa that's that's yeah. so shit. like the carl's marks street do you know what yeah. i mean that's that kind of stuff uh carl carl marks street um that's something that I like. I, I expected less, like to actually have. He has a, a street named after him, um, and then uh, like um, it's I, just like really normal things that maybe yeah. you wouldn't expect. And it's not like they're not like shoving it in your face, you know. Yeah. What I mean, it's just like, oh, there's a street called Karl Marx. Yeah. Or, or there's a tank here, do you know. What I mean, yeah. it's not like we have. Um, I don't know, like Mandela, Nelson Mandela Street in Glasgow. Yeah. It's like we don't have big statues of like people who are relevant to our culture, but instead we have little subtle things like a street named after them or uh, even the fact that uh, some people just kind of had like um, like uh, a star and sickle sticker on their car and things <laughs> like that. Just little subtle yeah. things that you think, oh, that's a, bit, that's a bit strange. But I mean, <laughs> I get it. I, I get like the deal, but... I guess we have uh, people that have uh, yes stickers and no stickers on their cars. Yeah. It's basically the same thing, but um, that's still like a, a political idea that's basically completely obsolete yeah. all over that oh, area. It's, yeah, it's not even political for them. It's more like, I don't know what it's... Nostalgic? Yeah, like, it's more like an aesthetic thing rather than yeah. politics almost. Like, um, yeah. It's weird to describe, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Also, I saw way more ladders than I ever thought I'd see in my life. <laughs> Um, I've had my my yearly and and uh, what, what's my mom was saying? My yearly dose of ladder ladder viewing in five days. In five days, yeah. Uh, ladders, communist stickers, Karl Karl Marx Street. Uh, what else? Lots of Lenin statues. A lot, like a whole lot of Lenin. <laughs> like he he must be the guy over there. Like people, big fan. Um, but yeah, jumping from that. Let's talk about the actual like ideologies of people because I feel like right. that is what really sell, sold it for me and what why this place like made such an impact on my way of thinking and sort of like, I don't know how to sort of articulate what I'm trying to say, but everyone was so content. Like everyone was so... Not even necessarily ecstatically happy or anything like at that. At peace, maybe. They're at peace. Yeah. That's exactly it. They were at peace. They have the the uh, bare necessities. They have the the bare minimum, and they're good with it. They don't need any more. That's how it seemed to me. It seemed like yeah. they they make enough to survive, uh, to pay their rent, or uh, yeah, to pay their rent and buy their food. And a lot of people also grow their own food on the side, like. Your grandparents yeah. grow almost like at least over seventy five percent of what they eat is grown by themselves. Yeah, like most of the stuff we had for dinner was <clears throat> yeah. A lot, a lot of the stuff was from their farm, or if not, it was like stuff made by their friends. By their from friends, yeah. Either their farm or their friends' farm or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is such a an amazing thing. Like we, uh, your grandmother's friend made me meatballs. Yeah. Um, without any eggs in them because they were like, oh, you can't have eggs. Um, so when we met her, your grandmother handed over something for her and she handed something back, like a barter system kind of thing, like, yeah. oh, I, you do me a favor, I'll do you a favor yeah. kind of thing. And like, there's nothing like that really. I know we like we kind of have that, but it's nowhere near. It's a lot more near. formal and it's yeah. not actually, people don't use they did it as it. the way to actually yeah. get stuff. It's more like presents or something, yeah. I guess, yeah. It seemed like over there they did it out of complete like, it was it was natural. It was almost it. like a trading system. Yeah. In a way, yeah. Um, it was. Uh, it seemed very intuitive. Like they, it was a normal thing to do there, and yeah. it probably is. Like yeah, it's no, something they do all the time. Is, yeah. Um, but yeah, what we ate was amazing. Like I've never <laughs> yeah. eaten so much so consistently. I feel like my stomach had right, swollen. Yeah, yeah. They do like to eat a lot. That's um, for sure. <laughs> and I I like to eat a lot as well. So that fit right in. Um, the food. The food wasn't actually that strange. Um, it was more like, mm. uh, m not minimalist, but it was like simple food. It was like... Well, I think because we had so many, the three of us had so many dietary yeah, restrictions, we were fairly limited as to what they could actually give us. Yeah. But even then, I think the food's not, I guess, that weird as people might think, I guess. Yeah. Um, the, so, yeah, 
I can't eat eggs or nuts due to allergies. Andrew is vegetarian and yep. Lucy's vegan. So we were like basically <laughs> the worst the worst people they feed, <laughs> yeah. Um but I feel like we ate quite a lot actually. Yeah. Like um the I feel like did we what was the soup we had? Uh I was just kind of trying to remember. What was uh, borscht? Right, so borscht is like uh turnip soup or something. No, it's beetroot soup, sorry. So beetroot it's beetroot soup. soup with like and you could put some cream or like sour cream yeah. called smetana on it. Right. So that's nothing we what had did any you of call that. that? Smetana. That's Smetana. like Russian or like sour cream, basically. Right. So that's borscht. I don't think we had any of that, but I think, uh, I can't remember what kind of soup. Had, it was just kind of yeah. a normal kind of soup, I think. We had, yeah. It was like it was, potato. It seemed like normal soup to me, yeah. yeah. Like but what was, uh, well, the best thing about that soup, or the best thing about that culture is that they put, um, soup. yeah, the coolest thing about the soup, or in my opinion, the the actual like best tasting thing about the, the soup was that they put sour cream in it. Okay, that and was not what I expected you to say. But yeah, okay. like that, why is that not a thing everywhere? I don't know, man. People, like, people need to learn. I, like, when you're... Like, I'd read about this as a thing. Um, I mean, I, I researched quite a lot, actually, if I'm being honest. I shouldn't have. I feel like it. It's called reflection, it's fine. It's yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I looked at it a lot, and I... When... Uh, so, before I was going, I mean, like, I, I looked at no, this. And sorry. then... Uh, so, I was... I, but I had forgotten about it. So, when they did it, I was like... Why is it, why did Andrew's grandma just put <laughs> put sour cream on it? Is this a normal thing? And I was like, wait, that's a thing um, that like these this area of of countries do. And when I tried, it, I was like, this is actually really amazing. <laughs> like I couldn't believe how well it tasted and how it's not caught on anywhere else. But uh, it's weird because the the sour cream basically like curdles instantly and has these little like sour cream. Curdly bits. It's yeah. almost like putting butter in something in a way. Yeah. It's, except it's it's because like it's the so hot it's and the cold and the dairy and the do you know what I mean? It's works. like it, it works pretty well actually. In fact the other thing you found out was uh was it cheese and jam. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> I need to yeah. highly apologize to my parents for that one because my mum and dad eat cheese and jam all the time. Like cheese and jam on bread. And then uh Andrew's grandmother's like slapping the bread down, slapping some cheese on it, slapping put, me as well, but. putting it, <laughs> putting some um, homemade jam on it, strawberry jam, and I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna have to persevere and eat this, and I'm like eating it, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> heaven in my mouth. I honestly, in that first day of trying it, I think I ate about six slices of, of uh, and that's not even like that's not even that half of it i ate so much <laughs> honestly that's what i need to reflect on how much i ate during yeah. that that trip um yeah because on, on day one alone to be fair we spent maybe like 20 to 30 percent of our time there just eating, eating. yeah yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah um also andrew's grandparents do not speak a word of english or the the your well, granddad my, my, my granddad tries like, his hardest yeah um he's a connoisseur of the the, the languages yeah uh, sprechen Sie Deutsch, <laughs> um, but and also me and Lizzie obviously don't speak a word of Russian. So Andrew was our number one guy here. We had to like basically use him as a means of translate. any sort of communication. <laughs> uh, he translated everything back and forth. Uh, so shout out to Andrew for being best translator, translator Yeet. of the year award. Um, but Andrew's grandparents were so accommodating, and honestly, I feel like by the last day i was starting to understand them a little bit like in a weird way i feel like uh our more physical communication was coming out and you could actually like gesture and understand and you're getting a hang of like do you know what i mean yeah i don't know maybe i'm talking nonsense no. but because no, I, I, like I, I, I kind of left you on with them for like at least 30 minutes or something yeah and you kind of get on pretty well i think we're, so. we're holding <laughs> our holding our end up um and what was it? I feel like I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, the food, right. When we got there, the first thing we ate was, and we were in your uh, grandparents' house, and the first thing we ate was porridge. Porridge, yeah. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of porridge. Like, I wouldn't make it by choice. But when I ate that porridge, I was like, whoa, it's pretty good porridge. I don't know what was in it that made it taste so good. It's probably just I think, yeah, it wasn't even, it was, yeah, uh, it was like, Packaged bars about from a supermarket. It wasn't anything super fancy. Still, but still pretty good. Yeah. So I was like, that's pretty good. And then I tried your porridge, yeah. which is like, what was that again? It's called. I'm not sure the English <clears throat> word for it. It's called a grechka, and it just kind of looks like black rice almost. I guess 
and it's got the same kind of mushy texture. Yeah. And it's a very popular kind of. It's not even like a porridge. It can it can be used as like a like an afternoon meal, I guess. It, you can eat it right. any time of the day. But yeah, it's kind of like a porridge. But it's yeah, it's very kind of. It's basically it's, the equivalent of a black bread. It's it's very healthy for you, but right. it's, if you're not used to it, it's not very pleasant. Well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I don't know if I was just uh, tired because we'd been traveling all night, or like, a, and I felt a bit off or whatever. But when I tried that, I was thinking, "Oh my god, is this the food that I'm going to be eating all week?" Like, that, I honestly tried that, and I was like, "This is one of the worst flavors I've ever had in my mouth." I really like it personally, but I guess yeah, you were if you're not, it, like, if, no you're not if you're not used to it, it's a bit of a weird one. I'm really glad though that Lucy also ate it and was like, "That's really bad." <laughs> like, I was thinking, "Is this just me? Am my, my taste buds off?" But no, that that would be so bad. <laughs> but that I think that and there was something else. But everything else was better than I've ever tried before in my life. Mm. Like, and what was the other thing? Like the tea. I know Lucy did. The tea really was like pretty the good. Tea. I quite like the tea. The right. tea was fine. Um, I'm trying to think what else might have been. We tried so much uh, potatoes French style, pretty good. Uh, doesn't have cheese in it, just grated cheese. Just shredded cheese. <laughs> or shredded yeah. cheese. An iconic line by Andrew's grandmother. Um, and oh, oh yeah, we again, we've already said this, but if you go there, which I highly recommend, you need to know Russian to some degree or you need to know someone that knows Russian and take them with you. Because even though this place is a must-see, I, I honestly I, and even more so now than ever because if it is changing you yeah, need to see it before I'd it does change recommend going soon if you're gonna go yeah um you need to know russian because no one there knows english and the people who do know english will talk to you in english and stuff like we bumped into one woman i think it was only ever one woman that spoke english pretty much yeah i think um she, she, she tried to speak english yeah but at least she tries you know yeah. she get like she, she probably really learned nice it at school or something yeah. remember that it's the only way um, she almost seemed a bit excited that there was probably, yeah. someone well, I think most people that see foreigners are excited because yeah. they're not used to it at all fair enough yeah, yeah. you were kind of celebrities there for a few days yeah I think. yeah everyone kind of looked the same way there no offence like I'm not not, not in a racist way out a little bit they, yeah, everyone has a consistent uh, look a, a, like god does that sound racist I'm, I'm no. digging myself a hole um I don't even know how to describe it because it's not a very it's not a European style you see anywhere else. Well, I think just because of the climate, most people are wearing clothes that are fit for that climate. So, of like, yeah. course, people were wearing shorts or dresses. Yeah. Probably like sandals, stuff like that. Well, there would be people with no shorts on sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's very <laughs> like, it's like well, when you go to the beach, almost it's kind of like that in a way. Yeah. Almost, but yeah, it's very it's very relaxed as well, and people don't really like try to like put on like mad kind of fashion trends or anything like that they just kind of like pull on wherever's comfortable and whatever again it's just a very down-to-earth community yeah. it's just nice people nice ideologies just so simple. so i'm rocking up with his like van flip-flops and whatnot yeah stood out a little bit <laughs> um <laughs> I, I, yeah I, I feel like i did look a bit people did there was a few stairs Them and gucci sandals though um mm-hmm. th- th- these are lies i don't do this um, but what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we we saw two Asian people and one American, and those are the only people that were like out with the people that clearly lived there. Yeah. Um, and for all we knew, the Asian people could have been actually living there. Yeah, I've no idea. Um, but, but the American guy, like he spoke like with he was a at very our sh- hotel. Strong he American was like accent. the only other person we saw at our hotel. Yeah. I'm pretty sure as so. well. Oh, and the, and the receptionist at the hotel spoke no English. Yeah. Because you tried to ask for, like... Uh, I asked for a hairdryer, and she was, like, looking at me. And then she, like... I think she brought up toilet roll. And I was like, no, 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 no. And I had to, like, show her a photo of a hairdryer. Yeah, so... Um, also, what's really funny, I thought, that because uh, Transnistria is so unrecognized by the rest of the world, my phone, uh, Vodafone, kept saying... Oh, welcome to Ukraine. Welcome to Moldova. Depending where I was kind of like standing in the city, yeah. Um, so it constantly informed me like of places I definitely wasn't in, so. and I didn't know which was this show was obviously oh, yeah. as well. No idea. It's pretty funny. Um, I even said at one point, "Welcome to Romania," and I was like, "Come on, there's an entire country between us. What's going on here?" Um, have you got any good stories? Like, I've got tons in my head coming, but you no, I'll any? probably bounce off yours. Once um, <laughs> so, uh, do you want to tell the Easter egg thing? Just so I get it right, the horse Easter egg. All oh, right, yeah. So wait, that, yeah. Do you guys actually celebrate Easter fully? Yes. Okay. 
But so not. It is, it is kind of like our religion is uh, like a subversion, I guess, of Christianity. Right. So it's called Russian Orthodox, right? Which is basically Christianity with some some small changes. I think. I feel like people uh, will definitely recognize its symbol. Yeah, so it's kind of like a cross, and then with like an extra added side design. Don't probably put it in the picture, but yeah, it is very similar to Christianity, just a little kind of different version of it, I guess. Um, and a lot of people are very religious there. I think it's a yeah. fairly there's a lot of churches. Country. Yeah. In fact, just that you said that, I feel like the church was the only thing that looked uh, not not like uh, how do I word it? Like it looked extravagant. It was the only yeah. thing that looked extravagant. That yeah. and uh, like government buildings. Yeah. They were the only two things that were like big and and marble and shiny and very 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 looked after. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I honestly forgot what I was talking about there. <laughs> Stories. What, what brought me onto this? Uh, why was I talking about churches, Orthodox, uh, church? Pay- oh, Easter egg, right, Easter. Yeah. Right, so yeah, you celebrate Easter. Yep. <clears throat> but before we do the Easter thing, you don't. Or you do celebrate Christmas, but you celebrate Christmas. Yeah. So Christmas we celebrate time. on the seventh of January. And it's quite mediocre. But yeah, Christmas is like, I guess like kind of New Year's and Christmas are kind of reversed in roles. Because right. here, Christmas is like the, the big event and New Year's is kind of like an afterthought. Yeah. Whereas in Russia, it's the way around. New Year's is like the big thing. And like for like Russian kids, it's during New Year's that Santa Claus actually kind of comes and that's oh, where right, all right. the presents and that's where all the kind of big stuff happens. And then uh, Christmas is just kind of a, an afterthought at that point. Christmas is just like, oh, okay. Boom. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, that's kind of like a big difference, I guess, for people that are not used to that. Right, now say the Easter egg thing. <laughs> right, yeah, so during Easter, so we obviously, we've got a picture of the big statue uh, in the center of town. And uh, there's a horse, and the horse has uh, fairly big balls, <laughs> to put it subtly. And uh, it's a very fond tradition to paint those uh, <laughs> eggs uh, and Easter colors as if they were Easter eggs. <laughs> this happens every year and it's a very fun tradition. Uh, I'm not sure how they get up so high because it's a pretty big statue and yeah. they must climb up it or something, but it happens and it's a, it's a very, it's a tradition very close to my heart. Of course, yeah. as, it, as it should be. Um, so, we went from Transnistria to Moldova for a day. We took an entire day and we Day three to, was Kishinev, yes. Yeah, so we went to Kishinev, uh, the capital of Moldova. And I must say, if uh, Transnistria was anything like Kishinev, I wouldn't have enjoyed myself, I don't think. Yeah. I would have enjoyed day one for just the experience of the culture, but that would have been enough for me. Yeah. Because Kishinev was... It was... Not this nice place. Yeah, it's not brilliant, to yeah. be honest. It's... This makes sense why people don't visit Moldova. Um, it's it's like it's not even run down, and it's kind of like parts of it are well, definitely are, the yeah. stairs and like the little yeah. passage bits. It is a very poor country, and, um, it, and it is overrun by corrupt politicians. In fact, I take it back; it's pretty run down because when we did get there, there was steps. So a weird thing is that there's very few places to cross roads in Moldova. You go under the road. Yeah. There's like these under ground lane things yeah um i think that's a fairly european thing but i don't think that's just i don't think i've ever thing. seen that anywhere else. i think it's maybe it is but kind of a european thing um but even at that these stairs are all janked up broken wrecked uh, everyone's like run down um in that sense like it also has like a it must have a crazy large population within the city because it, there was yeah. people everywhere cars everywhere there's, there's definitely like busy. what i was saying there's no homeless people in taras but there's definitely so many oh, homeless yeah. poor people yeah. there for sure um and in taras the the streets were massive but very few cars like there was cars going in there and then whatever but it, there weren't very many cars it was fairly uh fairly chill overall. yeah but in kishnov there were still wide streets but they were packed all the time. There's yeah. constant cars moving, people running about everywhere. And then it got even crazier when we got to like this market area. Yep. And this was pretty much in the centre of town where all the kind of bus stations yeah. are. Yeah. That's the reason we're heading there to yeah. get the bus. Yeah. Um, 
and it was like I, I remember going to Lissy I was like Lissy hold on to your phone hold on to your purse yeah. like keep everything close to you like zip your bag up or hold your like I was holding my zip my bag and yeah, hold my phone because definitely people giving that. you like the side eye they knew like that we were vulnerable uh, tourists like and they must it looked like a lot of people would feed off of that yeah it's not a very safe place in no. any kind of capacity um well on the other hand i feel like you could live in terraspo oh yeah and yeah. leave your front door open be yeah. pretty safe you yeah. could leave your car unlocked at night that's not a big deal it's insane how different that is, yeah. yeah um like I, in fact when i told my dad about it my dad said when he was younger it sounds exactly like where like where like this kind of area was like when he grew yeah. up and it was safe. You knew your neighbor. Mm. You could leave your front door unlocked. Things like that that you didn't have to worry yeah. about. People were generally good people, and you could rely on people as well. Like a lot of people, like a you knew you could trust people. And it's it was, just yeah, like a sense of community. It's exactly, a sense of community. Best way to describe it, yeah. yeah, which is pretty mental for a town as large as it is. But that's why yeah. I call it a town and not a city because yeah. it does just feel like a massive village almost. Yeah, it has the the fundamentals of a town. It's just really big, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Kishnov, though, very much not like that. Yeah. In fact, a guy basically tried to put us into human trafficking. <laughs> well, possibly, yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, so he, like, he knew we were worth something. <laughs> yeah, so I guess like the whole story behind that is we were kind of walking to the bus station. And so there was a guy kind of pretty much hanging about in an alley. And as we passed him, he was like, are you guys heading to Taraspo, which we were, so I was like, yeah, we are. So I was like, oh, you guys can get in my car. It's like 40 rubles or whatever. I'll drive you there in my car. And I was like, no, we're all right. We're just going to hit the bus. And he seemed somewhat eager to be like, no, no, it's all right. Just get, get in the car. It's yeah, 40 just, rubles will take you. Just do it. Which, to be fair, if that happened in Taraspo, I'd probably be like, fair enough. But I wouldn't get in the car anyway. Yeah, but, but you'd, I, you wouldn't. You'd probably be like, yeah, it's just yeah. a guy trying to give us a lift or something. Yeah. But in case, you know, if you definitely do not want to do that because that's step Sketchy. one of human yeah. trafficking yeah it's um and also this all happened like you were speaking russian to him so i we me and lisa had no idea what was going on we yeah. were kind of looking like oh my god what's going on yeah. here we're getting scared um but i'm just obviously like, nah we're, we're good, yeah. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> we'll take the bus um and like oh, i mean well i don't even know how i describe like Kishnov and really do it justice of how crazy it was. I think I think when Lucy said it, it's a little bit like India. I think she was yeah. kind of right, especially that market. It was just very like loads of people, also poor people. Yeah, just kind of hustling about. Yeah, definitely a point. Although I can, think even looking at footage of like India and stuff like that, it doesn't even look as scary and dangerous. Mm. I get that it has got this like maybe as I've never been in India, um, but. The hustle and bustle definitely looks like yeah. that kind of footage. Like yeah. lots of people, lots like of you things. can literally like turn an alley and never, die, yeah, like <laughs> never be seen again. Pretty much, it had that kind of vibe. Yeah. I think. be put into human trafficking or your organs sold yeah. on the black market, or something that you only read about. Um, but anyway, Transnistria is pretty nice. I'm a big fan. Um, and Transnistria, we also went to Andrew's grandparents' farm. Which was like it's about I don't know a quarter of an acre something like that. Well, they bought another yeah, too, farm. Yeah, there, one so one kind of block is like a quarter of an acre. Yeah. So. Yeah, and they grow tons of vegetables there. Um, and as as don't get me wrong, as interesting and amazing as Andrew's grandparents' farm is, the people that live across the road from them yeah, yeah. are even more interesting. Because, because well, because for my grandparents, it's kind of like a little hobby. It's yeah. not where they live, but whereas the people who went and visited, that's literally their life they're and like, where they live, yeah. Yeah, they, their house there, their family. There's was a, There was more than one generation of family living there, wasn't there? Well, I think, yeah, they had like two different generations. They had their dogs there and they had yeah. pretty much everything there. They pretty much just lived there, yeah. Yeah, like. their full life was there. Um, and, and I think that guy was like completely drunk when he was talking to us um, i mean no i think i don't know possibly oh he did have like four like barrels of wine yeah i was gonna say they're not even barrels they're like cr- not even crazy but like four massive barrels i of have wine, four yeah. i will put four in um he basically had four barrels of massive uh, like just homemade wine um in fact this this full section is gonna be covered in the weirdest photos because that guy also <laughs> yep. farmed uh Oh, he kept, the, he the kept uh, they're called 
Is, is Nutria the Russian word? Is that? Oh, no, wait, hold on. There was an English word for it, wasn't it? Water rats is what it basically... No, but there, there's an English word for that. Oh, you yeah. Probably look it up, the species. Actually. Oh. Yeah. But they, yeah, they're basically like a mix between like an otter, a beaver, and like a massive rat, basically. Yeah. They, they're they're, they're like kind like the of like water way, rats, but they're massive. They're like... The best way to describe it is just a massive rat. Water rat, yeah. webbed feet and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and it's like three or four feet long or something <laughs> they are <laughs> pretty fucking massive yeah they were so uncomfortable to look at because they had the creepiest yeah like just faces i guess oh. demon-esque feet and long long tails and yeah. grizzly lo- like weird <sighs> mismatchy teeth in fact his teeth weren't that much better to be honest <laughs> but uh, oh, they were very just weird but that guy farmed them to eat like meat he yeah ate the meat off that so he said it's very like uh it's kind of like turkey meat where it's kind of really good food it's good for like it's like diet meat i think you called it right so full, it's very full like protein no fat yeah basically yeah. that kind of meat um, which is so pretty damn weird but and he kept putting like, next right next to like the chickens and all that as well which just i mean i guess yeah. it, it, like i guess if you're used to it it's not that weird but i think all of us seeing that for the first time it's just like yeah what is going on well I, well, I mean, I'm guessing that that's not a normal thing over there. No, but that's the time I've seen that. Yeah, has, yeah, your gran was even like... Oh, she was like, yeah, you guys want to see this? Like, uh, this that, is so This weird, is a yeah. show, like, yeah. let's come and look at this. As, so yeah. it was she found it weird, very yeah. strange as well. Yeah. So this guy, would, like, he was one of a kind. And he loved showing us. Like, I was taking a video and he's, like, tapping me, like, look at this as well. Like, like he's gesturing. I obviously can't speak Russian, but he's, he's gesturing, like... Yeah. Take a photo of this, take a photo of this, <laughs> look at these. Um, and he had like sort of like a room specifically for some of them. And then there was like individual cages for a lots of them as well. Yeah. So it was like, I don't know. It, it seems as art, art and crafts. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we've done an episode on veganism and why, <laughs> like what the full deal is there and why that's becoming so prevalent, why yeah. it's important. Um, but I feel like even there's there's no animal like a rat that's ever been considered food yeah in so fact this might be a good time to mention that things like veganism aren't very yeah that, that was a good segue yeah the country's not very obviously as it, it does feel like it's in the past a little bit and that's yeah. not just in terms of technology and all that also Mindset. in terms of ideas yeah. and things like obviously gay rights lgbtq or whatever all of that stuff and then veganism as well not very progressive because i yeah. remember when obviously when me and tom and lucy first showed up there and she was like uh like i told her obviously i'm vegetarian and lucy's vegan she was like right cool and then she like offered <laughs> lucy cheese on multiple occasions and she was like do you want this meat yeah. it's like whatever so I th- yeah i think a lot of people definitely it's, don't really yeah. get it and i don't think it's it's not really like they hate on it or anything. They just don't understand. It, but yeah, it's definitely, yeah. they just don't really get it. Um, it's, yeah, you're right. It's like a older generation thing, yeah. but everyone's a bit like that, in a yeah. sense. Um, although, strangely, the first night we went to, was it the first night or second night? We went to a restaurant. Second night. The yeah. second night we went to a restaurant, which was directly across from the hotel we were staying in. And uh, Lucy got vegan sushi. Mm-hmm which is kind of weird. Well, because that was more of like a Western. It was place. definitely, yeah. yeah. I, it was definitely like a new cafe because yeah. they had like, well, obviously that sushi. They oh, gave yeah. you like some corn and some, yeah. some mad chicken. I got, I got like a very like American Southern fried thing or whatever it was. Lucy got a non-alcoholic mojito, which is a very popular drink over yeah. there. Non, non-alcoholic mojitos were everywhere, every shop. You and know, pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were good, yeah. The night before, um, oh no, wait, it was that night you were like, uh, you said why don't why is there not just why can you not just buy mojitos like non-alcoholic mojitos and then we kind of like started going to shops and we're like whoa everywhere, yeah, everywhere. sells yeah. non-alcoholic mojitos it was like they're equivalent to like i don't know iron brew or something I guess. yeah so iron brew yeah. that's a perfect example um, in fact you tried something that was basically iron brew yeah what was it apple it's called it? yeah well it's called uh it's called brotino which is like a very famous like russian kids drink right back from like it's pretty ancient it's like back in the 70s i think it was still around yeah. and uh i didn't actually realize that it tasted like Brook because i remember drinking it when i was younger and i was like oh this is like almost like apple aid or something right but i guess it does I honestly think like, yeah like do you do you agree with me brew. now yeah flat iron brew that's yeah. exactly how i described but it. not like in a poisoned way it's just gotta but it, it's way. not flat 
Yeah, it's so, not flat. <laughs> it just kind of tastes a little bit like that. Yeah. It's almost like uh, flat and brew rejuvenated to be fizzy again. <laughs> It's actually pretty good. I preferred it way more than Iron Brew. There you go. And I don't, I don't like Iron Brew at all, but I enjoyed that a lot. Like, I was drinking <laughs> way too much of that. Um, and uh, what was I going to segue to there? What were we talking about? Food and stuff. Food and oh. stuff, yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought now probably should mention how cheap it was as well, in terms of like yeah, food we, and just everything. Uh, well, we went to that restaurant, got, uh, did you get a meal? No, I just, I just got a fucking tankard of beer. <laughs> like, literally, like, like mm, an, a, 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 a bike and glass of beer, pretty much. Um, and we got, we got, we got, Lucy food got and sushi and a non alcoholic mojito. And, and you I got, got a full meal. Like, you got yeah. like chicken, corn, salad, just and fries a proper meal. As and well. fries, I got yeah. literally everything. Um, and it all <laughs> came to about two pounds. Yeah. <laughs> more or less. Um, which is insane. All of our meals, not just like one of our meals, yeah. all everything on that table came to about two pounds. Like we yeah. we left a pretty baller tip that night. <laughs> we were mind blown. Um, I mean, you're probably used to it, but I, I mean, unless you were like in denial or doing the maths. Especially and there were coming out, like, from London, where it was like yeah. at least a tenner for one person. For we stayed like in London. Yeah. yeah, we stayed in London one night on the way there and one night on the way back. And I spent almost, in fact, I spent uh, over double the amount of money, almost three times the amount of money I spent in the entire five or six days we were in Transnistria, which is insane. And that's yeah. just on food and general like stuff to live. And I don't want to be biased, but I feel like a lot of the food was just as good, if not better, as well. It wasn't I think like it's shit food or anything. Yeah, it was it's really pretty good. good yeah. yeah. In fact, I would argue that in Transnistria it was significantly better because it was all fresh. Yeah, it's it was not all been, locally produced. Yeah, it was all. It's not been packaged for yeah. months. It was made there and then. Um, I, I, in fact, oh man, Transnistria is so good. In fact, in the McDonald's in Kishinev, I had a lot of local stuff as well. Yeah, I remember. Oh, what the menu was like. I'm sure you got a picture. Yeah, of it, I, yeah, I do have pictures <laughs> because I was so mind blown of how differently weird that was as well. Um, in uh, Kishinev, uh, we had. Well, I, I do, did we all have food for McDonald's? I mean, I got a lot of food in McDonald's. Okay, so that's probably some years. <laughs> um, but w- the menu. Almost, not almost all of it, but a lot of food you could add shrimp to, which that was, was yeah. so strange that to was me. Like a weird thing. And uh, in fact, someone I told this to someone, and they were like, "Isn't isn't Moldova landlocked?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's kind of weird. Why?" I have to be honest, I've not even got an explanation for that. I yeah. think people just like shrimp, so they're like, Fair enough, let's man. get some 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 shrimp on Moldova. To be honest, I'm not a fan of shrimp, so I wasn't going for that. Yeah, um, I did have some bombas uh, fries. The, the fries is so weird there because you don't you can't get normal fries you either get uh, potato wedgies or you get uh, fries and like a relishy ketchupy sauce thing mm-hmm. uh, in fact the ketchup itself was pretty was, weird was pretty good I think it was way better it was good but it was not the ketchup we yeah. used to it's like uh, it's more spicy almost so. it's like a like you have to make ketchup at your house like mash up tomatoes and then mm-hmm. um, add salts and, and stuff like that yeah. to it uh, opposed to like a processed like yeah. consistently smooth ketchup um back to back to transnistria though the the food we went to a market the bazaar yep and uh so that kind of consists of one main area on the center and then which, which sold uh fruit veg legumes uh, what anything else? you could go on the farm yeah. you could buy there pretty much nuts yeah all that kind of stuff and then there was like separate areas for meat fish and dairy there's like little inside buildings yeah they were not little there. though they were pretty big like no, yeah, yeah. they were like the size of a, a supermarket a almost, supermarket yeah. themselves yeah. yeah Um, we went to the fish one to begin with like what, I think your grand was like oh well like, do you want to go in there and you were like no no, no. and then we were like oh what was that and you were like, oh, it was like the fish bit. I thought, we don't need to go see that. And I was yeah. like, oh, I'm kind of interested. And then like, I feel like it probably wasn't the greatest idea to go in because like every one of us were like, oh, this is hard, hard to look at. Yeah, well, first of all, the smell was just fairly smell was bad, as yeah. you could expect. But then you'd expect But that. also, the f- some of the fish were alive. Yeah, they were just alive. Not in tanks, not in water, just on tables, alive, kind of still yeah. struggling to breathe, still kind of half kicking um again if you're a vegan but, or a vegetarian yeah. not the most pleasant of places also 
uh, like that. Uh, that's normal there. That is, yeah. No one thought anything of that. That's just yeah. the way of life there. Um, which is so. Th- like. But I guess yeah, back in like all the times when people had farms and stuff like that. Probably the same here. It's exactly what it was like, I guess. Yeah, it's not that weird for them. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then we went into the meat area, and I honestly expected more strange meat things. the mm-hmm. The only thing that was like out of the ordinary was chickens' feet. Oh, and we also saw the little uh, off run of like milk or something or yogurt. The little. Oh yeah, thing, yeah, that's that's pretty strange. Yeah. Like the byproduct of a. Uh, milk i think or it's like when maybe. you when you create butter or cheese that i oh know I, I don't know if it actually comes from it was it when you curdle cheese. milk or something yeah, yeah there's like that sort of byproduct i don't know what the name is actually i'll put up those um but that uh like that stuff is is sold itself to presumably consume to drink i just don't know didn't want to ask it <laughs> um to be, to be perfectly honest and that's pretty gross. I mean, fair I mean, judge. Pretty but. much anything that's made of a farm, even like byproducts, I think you could probably find there. It's almost like anything you can eat, they will eat. Oh yeah. Plus people want to like make money any way they can. Yeah. So if people want to buy and stuff, then yeah, they, they, well. they want to get the use out of it as well. Yeah. Nothing, exactly. not, what's the point in putting anything to waste? So in that way, it's kind of good, I suppose. But Yeah. Um. My God, we've covered so much. I think we should have an episode two of this. Uh and also in that area well in fact back to how much we spent Mm -hmm. i spent 50 euros in fact just slightly less than 50 euros in total and that was maybe half of that went to presents yeah for people i bought so much junk in fact if i had the bigger suitcase i would have bought even more junk yeah and it wouldn't have even come to that much um there's like so many fake brands as well yeah we bought like so many rolexes for like two pounds a piece or something what confuses me about that is that people seem like they're not into that sort of consumeristic nature of buying. Oh yeah, that shop was empty. Stuff. We were probably yeah. one of the only customers of that guy that so day. So yeah. what's the what's the point of having a business like that? Just in no. the hopes that people do. Yeah, I think people do buy. Like more, more like young people, young people. Obviously, old people probably don't even know what a Rolex is. Yeah. But young people that know about Western culture, that's kind of like the whole kind of Western, Westernized part of it. Obviously, young people will probably know what like they've been, certain brands are. They've been plagued. Yeah, and they'll want to buy that. But even then, it was still fairly empty. So I don't know exactly how they run their business. Yeah. Younger, the younger generation. I mean, I didn't see very much of it. But when I did see it, I was like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but they would wear like full on... Uh, like off white or full on Gucci trackies, like full on like shoe to to hat, everything, one brand, one pattern, yeah. but completely fake and yeah. looked fake, <laughs> um, and probably cost about fifty pence for the full outfit. Yeah. I don't think they cared. To yeah. Be honest, yeah, but I mean, I kind of liked that. I was like, that's yeah. that is a look itself. <laughs> um, I think they were probably embracing the fact that it was fake. It's almost yeah. like an aesthetic itself. Uh, and Lucy bought a bunch of fake Fiora shoes yeah for Eulas or something like that no, I, think, I think they were trying to look like they were Fiora's yeah but it, uh, but the the F like I'll put before uh, there's something about it that's like just slightly wrong right. but just enough to make the brain <laughs> think it's still Fila right. um, the, but yeah in fact this, there's so many good fakes like um, it was like oh, you, I because you bought some hats as well didn't you yeah those those look legit though. Yeah. They weren't even slightly off. But what was the um pair of shoes and it was Oh no, it was Adidas uh Abibis. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Abibis or Abibas or whatever. That was brilliant. As I well. guess for people like us that aren't used to that, it was pretty funny to yeah. see that. But then people would be like, Probably oh, completely yeah. normal, yeah. yeah. They're like, Why are they laughing at Abibas? <laughs> <laughs> Abibas man. Abibas is my style, bro. <laughs> Um, yeah, so everyone costs so little yeah. in Transnistria. But what's weird is on the... In fact, in Transnistria, there was like graphics cards in one shop. There w- there's not very many shops like this, but mm-hmm. there was like a shop that was selling graphics cards. Um, and uh, what, what do you think the original price of that graphics card would cost? I think it was just slightly more expensive. So I think, well, it cost like, was it 350 or 400 pounds or something they are yeah that was like 200 or oh, 200 it was probably slightly more expensive but not a whole lot more expensive because it was legit graphics card yeah so obviously they would have to buy it from like china or whatever 
Yeah. So it would have cost them the same as it would be for UK to buy that. But on the other side, there was a TV there as well. Mm-hmm. And that TV was at least a thousand pounds cheaper there. Yeah. Which is like, makes no sense. Um, one sec. I don't really need this. No, I'll put it back. <clears throat> uh, what were we talking about? T- uh, cheap TVs and cheap TVs. Side. Oh yeah. Oh, geez, you good. probably could have got the new iPhone 11 there for a lot cheaper, except it might have been uh, a walk to that region, but funny that you said that i googled that afterwards um you can't buy a iphone from apple and transnistria oh. uh, no and moldova at all you have to buy it from moldaphone Mo- moldaphone Mold- was it not mode or something mode i don't know yeah. something like that um yeah that's the only retailer <laughs> of phones Right, of specifically apple phones like they can do they, they sell other phones but mm-hmm. when you want to buy an iphone that's the only company you can go to right it's so specific um and another thing was uh when we we're in uh, moldova looking at stuff in moldova what i thought was really strange is like the prices were all over the place there like there was a, a monitor there that was like honestly about Remember, do you remember seeing this? Oh, it was over a grand. Yeah, yeah. it was way more expensive well, than it would have been in back Ki- In Kishinev, because it is more a part of Europe and it is like a capital city in Europe, it does have like the prices you would expect. Kind of. A capital city to expect, kind of. But it was still, it was still weird, but it was definitely not like everything is cheap. It was no, no, like, it was almost like everyone was kind of expensive. Like, you could get an Xbox, like uh, an Xbox One X, that's the top of the range one, right? You could get that for about £75 cheaper in that store yeah but then there was a monitor there about 800 pounds more expensive yeah and i was thinking like, just all over the place yeah it was a bit more weird also we need to talk about that shom center because do you oh, remember <laughs> how did we forget to even bring this up we we're going through a shopping center pretty big one yeah tons of stores uh we we're going through them all um it didn't seem like that big a deal it was like it wasn't that weird it was just a normal it was shopping just a normal center oh so we thought so we thought until we kind of like come through to this area and it's like walking into like like that like a, a scene of like a kid walking at a toy shop just their mind blown we walked into this area and it was just a petting zoo within within the shopping center and we're like whoa my mind is literally blown <laughs> and there was like had every, fish tanks they had an and entire had cages, aquarium yeah. they had uh, a massive snake they had a goat <laughs> guinea pigs a guinea raccoons pigs. possibly what are those called russian mice oh russian ham- no, no, russian dwarf hamsters yeah they had that. so many weird and wonderful things uh they had a possum uh and a skunk they had a freaking a, goat they had a goat yeah that was definitely a highlight yeah. and there was just this one I don't know if you noticed, I have a video of it and just a baby yeah. patting the goat's head so hard, like, loving That's this something goat. you could only see in Moldova. Um, I don't even think you had to pay to get in that, yeah. Uh, you just had to wash your hands as far yeah. as I can tell. They just yeah. gave, like, baby wipes out or, like, uh, what's that called? Like, ah, yeah, hand lotion, yeah. Hand lotion, yeah. Um, but that was, like, <laughs> like I don't know, like, that... I've never just, witnessed it. I think like it just that seems so life. normal until that point, and you're like, what just happened, <laughs> man? Oh... Also, why are we not eating any of these brilliant Moldovan sweets? Because then all people would be able to hear us. That's ASMR. That's what I was going to say. That's episode brilliant two. Brilliant ASMR. Um, yeah, I think we should have an episode two because we've been shooting for, do you know how long this is? Mm. An hour and a half. <laughs> we've been talking for an hour and a half. No get, one's going to watch this. Get this so long, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we should close this episode right, now yeah. and have an uh, episode two in the near future and talk about this more because there is so much more to talk about but i feel like this is a good sort of rounded episode to kind of give the basic and a little bit in depth of what goes on in that area of the world and yeah. how hopefully interesting with it is. Peach, just even a little hopefully bit. yeah um i mean 
talking about piquing people's interest and viewership and stuff like that, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's watched this and listened to it because looking at the stats, it's not massive, it's not like a lot of people that have uh, watched it, but there have been quite a significant handful of people who have consistently watched it from beginning to end and to spend an entire hour listening to me talk to what I consider really interesting people is a massive compliment and I want to appreciate you for appreciating the content that has been created for this channel and this podcast thanks guys yeah thank you also thank you very much andrew for coming on and talking about this with me and thank you no thank you for having me (laughs) and thank you for taking me to a country a culture and a community that i would never get to experience without someone like you so thank you very much and yeah thanks for watching and listening peace out